cabinet yr eitem nesau yw'r cwestiynau amserol a'r cwestiwn cyntaf Eliaid Morgan. What assurances can the Cabinet Secretary give that the IT infrastructure in Wales is protected to ensure that continuity of care for Welsh patients following the cyber attacks on the NHS in England? Uh, I thank the member for the question. As you know, the First Minister issued a written statement yesterday regarding the ransomware attack which affected organisations globally last week uh, in the UK, primarily NHS England and NHS Scotland being the, the focus of attention. Whilst we have been unaffected on this occasion, we must continue to be vigilant to ensure that our systems are resilient as possible against future attacks on the network, which are sadly inevitable. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. I think the incident last week has raised many questions, most importantly, how we are going to protect our patients uh, in the NHS. And as you say, the report suggested that 47 trusts in England have been affected and 13 in Scotland because they'd failed to apply recent security updates that might have protected them. Now, I think it's worth noting that the impact is not just one of disruption and inconvenience. This actually potentially has life-changing and threatening uh, consequences. Uh, if you think about the impact on individuals waiting for scans, for cancer treatment, I think the impact could be incalculable. And such an attack by cyber terrorists is morally, I think, uh, ir indefensible. Now, the joined up nature of the NHS in Wales and the £11 million computer investment meant that there were fewer vulnerabilities in Wales. Um, but I think, of course, we've got to point out that there's no room for complacency. But I think it would be remiss of us not to acknowledge the efforts of the National Wales Informatics Service and the IT uh, teams across the whole of the NHS in Wales for protecting us from this latest attack. That's not to say that we should be complacent. It may happen again. But they protected us on this occasion, and I think we should salute them. Uh, I quite agree. I'm, I'm very happy to, to publicly acknowledge uh, and thank uh, staff in the National Wales Informatics Services, not only for the way in which they have made the case for and then applied uh, the additional cybersecurity measures that we've provided across the service, and not only for that they did actually uptake the security updates that, are, that apparently did not take place in NHS England, but the fact that uh, over the course of the weekend and at the start of this week, they looked for vulnerability within the system. They detected areas where the virus had been uh, intercepted by the measures we put in place, and they're able to actually uh, resolve some of the risks that existed. That, for example, included uh, closing off parts of the NHS to external emails. The right thing to do to make sure that our system was not compromised. But uh, that professionalism uh, is, is, is there to be vigilant constantly because this is not an issue that will go away this week and we can suddenly skip away and say we, there won't be a problem next week or the week after or next year as well. And there's a challenge here about making capital investment decisions as well. Um, it's not always very popular investing in areas like this, but it is essential. It makes a real difference to patient care. So uh, we can thank our good fortune and the sense that we have made of being one step ahead by making investment choices in cyber security. Caroline Jones. Josh Lewis, uh, we welcome the First Minister's written statement yesterday concerning the impact of the recent global cyber attacks on the NHS in England. It is positive to learn that the NHS in Wales was not significantly affected and services largely uninterrupted. However, we note that 40 cancer patients had treatment interrupted at Valindra Hospital uh, in Cardiff, uh, which for them must have been quite traumatic. It is clear from repeated events of this nature that we are living in a world where data held electronically is vulnerable and services can be brought to a halt within seconds of an attack. It is clearly unacceptable that the users of Wales public services should be affected in this way, but we also note uh, but we, we also do not want to overreact and throw the teddy out of the pram. Electronic data, electronic data storage is, largely speaking, more efficient and more secure than paper-based systems. So it is important we continue to develop our information infrastructure across Wales to maintain pace with technology. In light of this, would the First Minister give an undertaking to ask the new cyber security centre based at GCHQ to review cyber security across the public sector in Wales? Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you for the, uh, for the question. Uh, as you know, I'm not the First Minister, but I'm sure he'll consider um, your request. But look, there, there is already a review, as you'd expect to take place, within the service here to learn lessons from what worked and why, and what more we need to do in the future. And it's important that we do that, to understand the level of risk that we carry, understand what we do within the system, how we minimise that risk progressively in the future. And that's the right thing to do, and that's, and that's what we're already doing of and for ourselves, as we should do. Uh, we're lucky to have a national architecture with uh, the National Wales Informatics Service, where people are committed, committed to the Once for Wales approach we're trying to take on taking advantage of the developments in using digital technology to improve healthcare, uh, not just the process of the experience, but outcomes for people as well, as well as understanding the risk that attaches to that. Uh, there is uh, a meeting of the National Informatics uh, Board, um, a nice snappy title within the healthcare world, and they'll again be looking back at what's happened as they're looking to the future as well. So a properly balanced approach not complacent, but not forgetting, as you say, the real advantages and the real potential for improving healthcare by undertaking uh, uh, and unlocking the great digital potential that does still exist. Diolchir Ysgrenedd. Cabinet, yr cwestiwn amserol nesa gan Simon Thomas. Diolch, Llywydd. A wnaeth Ysgrenedd y Cabinet datganiad am y mil saith gant y chwedig a un o geisiad y glastir sydd heb i talu o hyd. Uh, thank you. As of this morning, there are 1,198 class day area claims still to process. For 2016, basic payment scheme claims were prioritised due to the significant value and number of farm businesses receiving those payments. As of today, over 99.2% of farm businesses have been paid, a total of £220.6 million of BPS. From January, Rural Payments Wales Focus switched to processing uh, glass day claims. RPW continues to work hard and all bar probate and other legally complex cases will be paid by the end of next month. Uh, can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary uh, back to her place and hope that she recovers uh, well. Uh, and can I just uh, say to her, I'm, I'm grateful for the updated figures, the figures I had in my original question date from um, about three weeks ago. So clearly some progress has been made. However, when I looked at the profile of these figures, uh, Gwynedd in particular, and uh, Myron Duivo has been one area that's been where farmers have particularly complained, had a very bad profile within that. Uh, and I think it is important to put on record that, of course, these, though they're called glass deer payments, in almost all circumstances, they are repayments for money that farmers have already spent on work uh, already undertaken and uh, often inspected on farms. So can you confirm what you told us uh, 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 of other, it wasn't you, it was your, uh, at the time somebody standing in for you, uh, what the government told us on the 11th of April, which was that you did expect all these payments, with the exceptions of very difficult ones, to be paid by the end of this month. Uh, I note that so far that doesn't look completely likely. And can you also uh, say whether you're considering any further steps that you can take as a government to help farmers who are facing a very difficult time, an uncertain time as well, with, with Brexit. For example, I understand the Scottish Government has allowed loans to be made and then uh, for the final details of payments to be done uh, later on down the line. Are these uh, also being con actively considered as a way of helping farmers who really do need now these glass deer repayments to be made? Um, thank you. You're quite right. Since um, I think it was a written question um, that was issued to uh, the leader of the Welsh Conservatives, there have been a further 563 claims uh, paid, and I've given you the current position um, today. Um, we did inform farmers that this, this would happen because of the uh, way that we were doing uh, the BPS after the changes um, last year. So, you know, I don't accept that the glass deer payments are late because we didn't actually say uh, when they would be paid uh, by. However, you know, I do appreciate the, the difficulties. We did actually say we would start um, paying glass deer uh, payments in February. We actually started um, in January, so we, we were a bit earlier. And as I've um, said today, they will all be paid um, by the end of June. Uh, you, you asked about loans, and I am aware that the Scottish Government uh, were, were, were doing that. I mean, any loan scheme would likely fail EU state aid um, rules, and I think that would then uh, you know, increase the risk of us being penalised um, financially. I also think it would take time to establish, and quite frankly, I'd rather um, RPW staff be out there getting those claims processed as quickly as possible. Paul Davis. Uh, dear Shabby, the Cabinet Secretary, it's absolutely crucial that all of the 
1,198 outstanding last year applications are now paid as soon as possible in order to protect the viability of those farm uh, businesses. And it's simply unacceptable that it's been 18 months uh, since some farmers have received uh, a last year uh, payment. And I think this is further evidence that the last year scheme is still plagued with difficulties and that there is far too much bureaucracy in the system. So in the circumstances, will you outline what additional support the Welsh Government will be providing for farmers affected by the delaying payments in order to protect their businesses in the interim? Uh, there is also a real concern that the system in its current format is inadequate, as you'll know from my own correspondence with you on this matter, that it's my view that the Welsh Government should be making it easier for more applicants to carry out environmental practices, not putting obstacles in their path. Given the current concerns with the system, do you therefore agree that it is now time to review the management of the entire implementation of Glastyr to ensure that the scheme is more coordinated and actually encourages landowners to carry out more environmentally friendly management practices rather than deters them? Um, I actually think um, you know, this Glastyr has been incredibly successful. In fact, this year, We've, um, we've had an increase in the number of glass deer uh, contracts and claims to process. We've had, a no, I think it's an additional 543 um, successful glass deer applications. So I actually think it's been you know, a very uh, incredibly successful um, scheme. You also will appreciate that the um, EU cap simplification meant uh, we had to have additional checks uh, were introduced for glass deer. You know, we needed to bring those uh, in line with um, BPS. We've also had um, complications with MAP in 2016 integrated administrative control system inspections, and that again will have impacted on last year. I'm always very keen to look at how we can simplify uh, any process, and you'll be aware of the new uh, farming business grant scheme that we've brought forward, and I've been very keen to make sure um, that's as simple as, as possible. But I do assure everyone all payments will be made by the end of June. Neil Hamilton. Yeah, I also welcome the Cabinet Secretary back to her place in, in this Assembly and hope that uh, uh, her health will continue to improve. Um, uh, the, the Cabinet Secretary, I'm sure, will share my disappointment that some farmers, as Paul Davis just pointed out, have been waiting 18 months for their payments, given that by this time in, of the year, uh, many farmers experience cash flow difficulties at the end of, of the winter, and uh, that uh, we, we must certainly try to ensure that what are described as annual payments are just that, and not, not uh, payments made every, every 18 months in future. I appreciate that no administrative scheme is going to be perfect and foolproof, uh, but we, we should certainly do our best to ensure that what is described as an annual payment should be just that. Um, when farmers ring the customer contact centre, they are given no idea about when their payments might be made, and I wonder whether there might be some improvements made in the information which can be given to them, even if it's only of an approximate nature, through that, because it is a worrying time for many farmers, uh, how they pay their bills, and, and uh, they're beginning their business plans for, for the, the remaining part of the year. And the third point I'd like to, 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 to make is that, uh, unrelated to the previous point, that farmers have recently, or some farmers have recently received letters in error from Rural Payments Wales with regards to glass tier non-completion of capital works, when in fact the work has been completed. Um, uh, and can you confirm that uh, Rural Payments Wales will uh, contact them directly as quickly as possible to confirm that the, the letter was sent in error? Thank you. Yes, as far as I'm aware, um, all people have been contacted already and, and probably a couple of months ago to say um, they were sent in error. Um, in relation to uh, being given information about when um, they will have their payment, I think that's a very um, fair point. And certainly I've had a meeting today with our PW uh, staff to say, you know, that at least they can be told uh, by the end of June, for instance, which I don't think uh, they have been. But, you know, I have been given assurances by uh, my officials that that will be the case. And I hope that all uh, farmers who are still waiting will hear this or have been told by RPW um, staff that they will get their payment by the end of June.